Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Zendaidu Kai, and in this video, I am configuring the small Arturia MicroLab controller with the generic FlexiScript from Driven by Moss. I'm using this controller because it really doesn't offer many functions. But we are going to change that now, and we are adding knobs to this knobless controller. This means that we are now creating a DAW integration for the Arturia MicroLab controller for which there's actually no door integration. And a special greeting to Arturia. You could really start supporting Linux or even better make your configuration software platform independent. After all, it's the year 2024. Then let's get started. <laughs> this is the controller. A USB cable and these are all the knobs and buttons that are available. A hold function with a chord function, a MIDI channel switching function, shift and MIDI channels over here, an octave up and octave down button, pitch bend wheel and mod wheel and 25 keys. That was it. Or is it? That would have been it if it wasn't for Bitwig and especially driven by Moss by Jürgen Mooskaber with a brilliant generic flexi script. Write a greeting under Jürgen's and Bitwig's videos that you have watched the video here. With a generic flexi script from driven by Moss, I extend this controller with play, stop, record and undo, jump back one bar, jump to the beginning of the loop bar, toggle punch in and punch out, eight knobs of faders and a reset to the middle, mode changes, change tracks, sense devices and plugins and more. In total, I'm adding over 80 functions to the controller and there's more if you want. If you haven't done much with the controller before, don't worry, it's quite simple. When a button on a controller is pressed, it sends a MIDI command and each of these buttons has its own number. There are different categories of these MIDI commands. To name the most common, MIDI CC, control change, is used for many buttons, knobs and faders. MMC, MIDI machine control, originally used to control hardware devices. For example, the play, stop, record transport field is usually controlled via MMC. These commands do not contain MIDI synchronization information. And note, these are sent when a keyboard key or possibly a pad is pressed and released again. All these knobs, buttons and faders each have their own number so that they can as be assigned in the DAW. For example, if you turn knob 5, the same parameter must always change in the DAW. Logical and easy. In the past, the controllers always had an appendix with a list of which button, knob or faders outputs which number with which MIDI command. But that seems to be have been sacrificed in order to save money. In any case, I haven't seen anything like it for a long time. But even that is not a problem. If the manufacturer leaves you out in the rain, with the help of MIDI monitoring tools or simply here with the driven by Moss generic flexi script, all you have to do is press the button and you can see which number and what other information is being sent. But now let's really get started. I'm doing this here in a great detail to show you how to get the relevant information, which functions are useful for me and how I implement them. I have also created corresponding tables so that you can look at this overview and better understand how I link them. And finally, I have also created a one-page function overview in case you don't use the controller for a while so that I can immediately see where which functions are stored. Let's go. The MIDI controller here, the Arturia Microlabs, must be connected to the computer and recognized by the operating system and Bitwig. And then open settings, go to controllers, add controller, Select FlexiScript, Add, Assign the MIDI ports, 
And now you can press all numbers and keys and buttons to see which information are sent from the controller to Bitwig. And you should preferably write them down. I have done this here. as you can see, and then immediately thought about in detail which functions I assign and how and in which slots I save them, like here. And finally, I wrote the whole thing down in an overview so that I can immediately see how I can call up which function in this picture. And the first action I do in this script is to save it. So I go down to load and save. Every time you change something and you want to keep it permanently, you have to click save. That should be clear so far. And each time a save as windows must pop up, which you have to confirm. If the window is not visible, it may be that for some reason it has popped up behind Bitwig. Saving in the memory slots over here follows a simple logic. You select a slot, like for example one, then you press a button fader node or another dingsy, like this, then you press set and save this hardware assignment. And now you just have to select the function of your dreams, like for example something like this, and that's it. On to the next memory slot or save the configuration file in between. To delete such a um, selection, you just have to go over here and select off and all the connection is then deleted. To save the configuration file is important as some controllers sometimes get a bit bitchy if you make changes too often. If this happens, simply deactivate and reactivate the script like this. This reinitializes the controller and reloads the last saved configuration file. And then you can continue. If this does not work, disconnect the controller from the power supply for a minute. Or if it gets really strange, follow the old IT rule and restart the computer. Hello IT, did you try to turn it off and on again? Okay, so let's get started. I have this overview over here and um, you can see that I already put everything in a workflow that I have thought out. And um, let's start to assign everything. So the first thing I do is to make this a little bit narrower, more narrow, narrower, narrower. And I want to assign record to shift plus octave up. So you remember here shift and octave up this should be record so first thing record shift plus arc then the midi channel must be midi channel one that's important and i save it in slot 29 so why i save it in uh, um, slot 29 i explained that in the first video okay now shift plus octave up you see here something changed and i click on set and now the hardware to the software connection is, is established and i have to search for record and record is always the transport so transport is over here and i search for record toggle record it's a toggle button so I click it and if you can see over here, if I press now shift and octave up, it toggles the record button. Okay, let's go to the next one. Play. Play is shift plus 
oct an octave down on MIDI channel 1 and MIDI CC 28 and I save it on the slot 28 like this and now I press shift and an octave down see something happened here then I click on set and I select now from the transport transport play okay so if I now press shift and octave down it starts playing if I press it again it stops if I press it um, quick after each other it resets to the beginning of the arrangement so I have three buttons or three functions this is play stop playing and reset to the beginning of the arranger okay so let's go further now I want to have jump beginning of the looper I will now um, define all these um, these buttons and keys to their function and we'll explain after I may gone over here for example um, why I did it this this way so okay jump beginning of looper looper is MIDI note 50 and I save it on 50 over here and it's MIDI channel 2 so I switch to 2, I press the shift and the D sharp button. And it's it's changed to MIDI channel 2 and I press here the D note. So I see note, MIDI channel 2, set and now jump beginning of loop bar and the loop bar is something that you can't find over here I think you have to search it in the actions let me show it here are some actions you can define eight actions and here you can here you can select arranger and you can select beginning of loop bar jump to beginning of arranger loop okay and my slot function is action number one. Okay. I will explain in a minute why I do this this way. So jump to the previous bar just means it jumps back one bar every time I uh, press the note C1 on MIDI channel 2. Okay, then select slot number 48. Is it? It's over here. And then make sure you are on MIDI channel 2. Just shift and D sharp. And now press C1. You see something changed over here. Press set. And I have to use an action again, the second action. So. I go again here on Arranger. Then I want to have jump to previous bar. This Q marker. Beginning of current. Jump to the beginning of previous bar. Okay. This is action two. And my function is execute action two. Okay, then I want to have toggle punch in. This is on MIDI channel 2. It's the note E1 and on a slot 52. So 52. Make sure it's MIDI channel 2. Then press E1. Press set. Toggle punch in, punch out is the transport like here. So toggle punch in, then the next one toggle punch out is slot 53, MIDI channel 2, note F1. So 53, then F1, 
set and transport, where is it here? Punch out. Okay. And then I want to have an undo function. And the undo function I put on shift pitch bend because shift pitch bend gives me a different MIDI CC number than the pitch bend itself. So I get here 112 and I save it on 112. So 112, okay, on MIDI channel one. Or on every MIDI channel, I think so. So um, shift pitch bend over here, set and undo mode is on global over here and undo, it's global undo. And then I finish this blue section with next mode and this is connected to shift plus mod wheel on MIDI channel one. This is 114. So I select 114 over here. Then I press shift and the mod wheel. Did I do that? This way. And now I select next mode from the notes me modes menu here. So mode select and next mode. Okay. I did this, maybe just make it a little bit smaller. So I, I defined record play, jump beginning of loop bar, jump beginning of previous bar, and so on. So I put the loop bar over here, the arranger bar. And now, so I can press shift and, and octave down to play something. Okay. I can shift and uh, octave up to toggle record. And if I shift octave down, it starts playing. See, I can stop with it again. So now with the undo mode, shift pitch bend, if I hold down shift and touch slightly the um, pitch bend, I can, I touch it twice, sorry. <laughs> I can, um, undo that let me just try that normally it's not so sensitive see okay so now i change that and now if i want to record something and i put the um, loop bar over here for example and i simply can use now the toggle punch in and punch out these functions that are over here if I just zoom in here a little bit, you can see punch in, punch out. Sorry. <laughs> so, and this is on MIDI channel two. So I switch on MIDI channel two and it's an, uh, these are the notes E1 and F1. So let me show E1 and F1 or on the other, maybe the other Overview is better here. This one. So here you see the numbering as well. So this is E1 and F1. Okay. So I change to MIDI channel 2. And now I can switch on here. Punch in and punch out. So now when I just press play, it starts recording over here and ends automatically recording over here. Let's see. Okay, now I can start over here, switch back to um, MIDI channel one and start playing. And now you see it starts recording and it ends recording at the end of the loop bar. I just press shift and octave down again to stop. I could now just double click play, but then I jump to the beginning of the whole arranger. So I'll de I defined jump to beginning of loop bar with on MIDI channel two with the D and now I'm there without using the mouse or the keyboard. So if I want to record that again, 
I could press shift and the pitch bend. Now it's away. But now if I record, it immediately starts over here. So I want to jump back in, in uh, a bar or two, for example. So I, ch I just use the MIDI channel 2 and press C1 to just jump one bar or two bars back if I want to. Okay, there's still punch in, punch out defined. Always think if you use uh, punch in, punch out, that you um, switch it off again after you used it. But it's still on here. So I can switch back to MIDI channel 1 and just hit play. I have now two bars and now can start playing and it stops after that. Okay. So that's the first workflow I have without touching mouse or uh, keyboard or anything else. I just can concentrate on, on, my, on my play, on the, on the keyboard, on the controller. And if something goes wrong, I don't have to fiddle around with the mouse and something. I just can use the undo function and jump back to the beginning of the loop bar or back to uh, an, another um, bar and so on. That's the reason I defined the, these um, keys, okay? Um, and the next mode is simply um, turn or circle through the whole, all the nodes I explained in the last videos about um, the modes and options. So if I now use the shift mod wheel, I have to move that away because you can't see that anyway. So now I'm just using the, um, the mod wheel to change the mode of Bitwig or the mode of the um, values for the mode items. <laughs> so, and this list just goes in one direction. So if you missed, for example, let's say, if you miss Panorama because you we're going to send one you have to go through everything again till you reach panorama again so it goes in a circle like this or if you want to go to track here's track this is always track volume panning then every cent there is there are actually two so it goes to two cents then device and then it jumps back to track volume panning send one send two device track and so on okay so let's go to the next. There's the mod wheel and the pitch band. I won't assign that, that to something else on the MIDI channel one. It ju I just leave it there. And as well, the uh, hold button. I don't use that hold button for any other, other thing. I could use it if I want to, but as far as I remember, it doesn't. It only uses uh, MIDI channel one. We can test that in a, in a second. So if I reassigned it to something, I w wouldn't have the, um, the hold button again. So I have no sustain if I just press some keys and want to fiddle around with a mouse or something. I um, wouldn't have that function to have uh, my hands free to do, to do something. Okay, so now we go over to the set value, and these are the mode values. And in in this, in um, with this, I assign to this knobless controller. You remember, it doesn't have knobs, no knobs, but I assign the mod wheel like a knob, so I can use it to fiddle around there and just emulate one knob. And because I said value one would be the first knob, value two would be the second knob, third knob, and so on. And because I've sent, I, I assigned the mod wheel to different MIDI channels, I can just switch the MIDI channels, and then the mod wheel is assigned to another value. So I have eight knobs at the end. Not in parallel, but in serial, if you like so. So then let's go and assign these knobs. And I've used as well a little jump from the uh, slots, from the memory slots, because just to have a little bit more space in between. And when I was doing the German version, 
I noticed that it might be a good idea to do something similar with a pitch bend. The pitch bend has one thing here. It always jumps to the middle if you, if you leave the, the fader. So it's not really usable to use it as a second mod wheel. If you could change that to not jump back to the middle, I don't know if that, if that is possible. If you know that, please write me that in the comment. That would be uh, really great because then you had two controllers at the same time. So, but here I said I used a pitch bend to just reset the, the value to the middle. So if there's between 0 and 100, it goes to 50. If there's from minus 50 to plus 50, it goes to 0 and so on. So it's kind of a reset button. And um, I think one can use that in, in many situations. So, but now I um, assign everything over here and we'll think fast forward everything. So I select the slot 200. Where is it? 200, like this. Then I shift to MIDI channel 2 and just use the mod wheel. And now I do that with a, the same with a pitch bend, going from MIDI channel 2 to 9 and assigning um, this function to the memory slots. Okay, and in this point, I should save it again. Okay, so now maybe not move it away, just use, for example, Polysynth as an example and open here the remote pages. And now you can see I have the mod wheel on, for example, MIDI channel 2. And this controls the value 1. And the value 1 is the control value over here. And if, I, if I'm on the right mode, I have mode with next mode, shift mod wheel. Let's see which mode we need to have in device mode. Send one, send two device. Now we're in device mode where we can control the remote controls over here. And if I now move the mod wheel with my finger, you see this control moves. If I change to, con to MIDI channel three, it moves here. MIDI channel four, it moves here. MIDI channel five, MIDI channel six, MIDI channel seven, MIDI channel eight, MIDI channel 9. See, I can move everything with a with a, um, mod wheel. And if I just touch the pitch bend, it jumps to the middle. There's no chance that it goes the other way. So, if the control is good in the middle or reset in the middle, this is perfect. If not, you have to use the mouse again. Or if it's just zero, you could, which one could be zero? The sync button, for example. Then you just, oops, sorry. Then you just 
um, use the module to, to turn it down or the uh, unison, for example, to change the unison parameter or something like that. Or the, for example, the sub, you put it over here. Okay. And if you need to put it back in the middle, just tap the pitch bend and it's back in the middle. Okay, this is kind of a reset button. It's not perfect, but it works for many situations. So now we have uh, uh, some other definitions over here. This is the previous item page and the next item page, the previous item, next item. Then I have device parameters and expand. And this is the device parameters are these things. So you can open and close then just just closed it here. You can open and close the remote control pages and device expand is that you just minimize the device itself. So you have a little bit more space over here if you want to control several um, devices or plugins. Okay, let's do this right now. Okay. Okay. So now previous item page is on node C1 sharp on MIDI channel two. So let's change to MIDI channel two. Then select the memory slot 208. Like this. Then press C sharp one. You remember maybe or maybe not C sharp one is and this one. Okay. So I press C sharp one. I already pressed it on MIDI channel two. I set it and then previous item page is with the modes. And it's previous item page. Previous item page. This one. Okay. And then I use the next one is memory slot 209. Where is 209? 209. Then the note is D sharp 1. Okay. So I press D sharp 1 on MIDI channel 2. Set it. And choose next item page. So if you by accident select the same knob for different um, functions, um, the script will only use one function. I am not really sure which function. I think it will be the last function that is loaded by Bitwig. And since the configuration file is not sorted, it could be that this is the last definition you did. I'm not really sure. So if you define something on a key and it doesn't work, it's mostly that. If it's not the controller that is bitchy or something, maybe if something works completely not, then just use your prob or, or write down your problem area, which knobs doesn't work, um, create a new one and try it on the completely empty script. And if it works there, then you did something wrong. Then you can be sure. Okay, 209 um, with D sharp. I use that. <laughs> I'm on. It, it already changes. Did you see? <laughs> it changes the the knobs, but we 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 have we'll have a look in a minute. Okay, so then the next slot is previous item two hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten over here. Previous item is on F sharp one. Okay, so I press F sharp one. It's still MIDI channel two, and I. Set it to mode previous item, previous item over here. Okay. And then we go to 211. Such a table is always good to not 
uh, um, be confused of anything. So I always select the whole line so I know where I am and always can check um, on the screen and on the table, on the sheet, where I am and what I have to do. <laughs> so G Sharp 1 on MIDI channel 1 should be next item. So I set it, set to mode and use next item, not item page, item. Okay. Then I'm setting up device parameters. This is A sharp one. Okay. On 212. 212. A sharp one on MIDI channel two. Okay. Set it. And now device parameters. This is on device and parameters. There it is. And then I use device expand 213 on the C2 sharp. So I go to 213, press C sharp on MIDI channel 2, set, and use again device and expand. Okay. Now I save that again. Okay, okay. So let's see what we've done. What have we done? Okay, maybe I add another device. You can't see, but I can. For example, this one. I close here the modulators as well because it just looks nicer without modulators if you're just doing that. Okay, so we are on the device mode, are we? Shift mod wheel. We have to be in device mode. Now we are on device mode. So we are over here in this area, in the device area. Okay, and now I can use previous item page, next item page on MIDI channel two or previous item, next item. So if I use previous item page or let's say next item page, MIDI channel two, I change to MIDI channel two. And then I use C sharp, the first black key from the left. Okay, when I press it, you see it scrolls around here, then it stops. And if you see the list, the first one is um, oscillator 1, oscillator 2, oscillator XXX, mix, filter, and so on. I'm now at oscillator 1. I'm pressing C sharp 1, nothing happens. If I press D sharp 1, it jumps to oscillator 2, so the second in the row. Okay. Next one, next one, mix, filter, filter, rec, and I go back. Filter, rec, filter, mix, OSX, OS, oscillator 2, oscillator 1, and so on. So in device mode, I jump between the um, remote pages. If I use previous item, next item, here in this case, next item, I use G sharp one. I jump from this device to this device. See? And back. Fourth and back. And if I use again C sharp one and D sharp one, Next item page, oscillator 2, oscillator xxx mix, and back. Like this. Okay. Now I can use the device parameters and expand with the A sharp 1 and the C sharp 2. So A sharp 1 is device uh, parameters expand. These are the remote pages. I can open and close them. Mostly <laughs> I would use them to open them. But sometimes you need to close them as well. I don't know. And you can switch to the other um, device and open this one. See? Or go back and close this one, for example. Open it. Go to this one and close it again. Or open it again. Go back and forth. See? So there you can jump. And the last parameter over here is expand. So the C sharp 2. 
So now if I'm on the polysynth and I use C sharp 2, I just minimize the device over here or the plugin if you have one. If I would now, for example, use Hive 2, right? So you're here in, in device mode, for example, and you could just it now jump to the hive and now minimize it over here or open the parameter pages. See? It gives you a little bit more space to work with, you know? You still see the title bar over here and you know what it is. But now you can see a little bit more, I'm not so confused about um, other things that are happening around here. For example, like that. So everything is reduced to that what you want to see. Okay, these are these buttons to just have your workflow with working with the devices and the plugins. So now sometimes you need to jump to them directly. Or let's let me um, show you something else. Um, if you have some more tracks like this and some more scents like this, many tracks and many scents. If that does make sense, I don't know, but you have scents. Okay. <laughs> I won't repeat that. Oh, let's let's keep that over here. So now it depends on your it depends on your mode where you are in. You have mode track mode, volume mode, panorama mode, sense one to eight mode. It depends always how many sense you have. If you have only one cent, you can you jump from panorama to send one and then directly to um, device mode. If you have eight cents. You jump from panorama to send one, then to send two, send three, send four, send five, and so on, to and then to mode device. Okay. And with this um, previous item and previous previous item page on or next item and so on, you always have nearly the same functions over here. See, previous eight tracks, previous track, previous track, previous track, except for the device. I demonstrated that to you for the remote pages and the device, but I wanted to show you, for example, if you are in the track mode. Okay, so I changed to track mode. But we have to see. Oh, we are in track mode. They use shift and mod wheel to go back to track. Oh, see, I missed it. So I have to go back, device and track. I missed it again. Device and track. Okay, now I am in track mode and can use with mod wheel. Where is it? Mod wheel set value one. On the second MIDI channel, I now can control the volume. So if I use now the mod wheel, the, the volume changes, but I'm on a different. The volume changes, but I don't know where. I'm here. I don't know why I'm here. I should be here. Okay. So this changes the volume. The second, the second mod wheel, if I change to the next select item, will change the panning. So now I change the panning. If I want to, if I want to have reset it in the middle, I just use the pitch bend. Now it's in the middle again. That's the reset of the pitch bend. If I want to um, change the scent, I go to the next MIDI channel 4, and now I can configure the scent. MIDI channel 5, MIDI channel 6, MIDI channel 7, MIDI channel 8, MIDI channel 9, see? 
And this are six cents. This is the six cents. Now you know the movie. If you know the movie, <laughs> okay. Okay, this is the track mode. So, and you could as well use, like we defined, wait, let me, let me make this big. This is better, better overview. We now can use the previous item page, next item page, and previous item, next item to change between the tracks. So this would be C sharp one and C sharp, uh, D sharp one and F sharp one and G sharp one. So I'll make this a little bit smaller. Put that over here. And if I now use on the MIDI channel 2, C sharp 1 or C or D sharp 1, I jump over here in eight in eight eighth blocks. So I'm here on eight, jump on the next, I'm on 17. <laughs> it's maybe not like directly 16, but you know. From from hive to nine. <laughs> nice sentence. Now it's from hive to nine, then to seventeen. There's something wrong wrong with the first one. I don't know why this happens. Okay, and if I use F sharp one and G sharp one, I could just jump track by track, like G sharp one, F sharp one goes back. See. And this repeats in all the modes, in the track mode, in the volume mode, in panorama mode, in send mode, and so on, everywhere except in the device mode, as I already told in the last um, tutorial about the um, modes and options. Okay. So it's just a matter of how often you use it. If you use it three, four, five times, then you know it. Okay, so and now we we defining to select an item directly, not just to dial through until you're on, on item five or something. Now we, uh, we define keys to directly jump there. Sometimes you need that. But we do that on MIDI channel three. So put that over here. Okay, then we select the slot 220. Okay, I now configured every item and I save it again. Important. And something similar goes now with select the different modes directly. So if you if you need to select um, your modes directly instead of using shift and mod wheel and not to want not want to circle around all the time. So that's it. But there I use MIDI channel three and the second octave. You remember, where is it? The second octave over here, like track mode, volume mode, panning mode. I think then send one, send two, send three, send four, send five, send six. I forgot something. I think so. Because the last track mode I put on C3. Because this is a very often used mode and it's from from using it very simple because you have you don't have to look at your keyboard, you just have you put your finger on, on the side and just then use the first key where you, where it starts from the right side. So that's the reason why I left keys over here. So let's start. Select track mode is 200 and 30, jump again. Device mode. Okay, 
Then let's save that again. Save. Okay. It's saved. So this is now the whole configuration. Everything is now saved in the script, in the generic Flexi script. And you see, with this little configuration, this assignments over here and here, and this complex structure that is built up upon the um, modes and options, you can really, this is not true, there are more than, um, let's, let's, let's just write over, 80 function. I don't know. Maybe you can count that and and write me in the comments how many how many functions that are in in general everything. If you just use every function like um, using in volume mode, uh, volume track, or in panorama, selecting the panorama track and so on, or the different tracks and so on. So. Um, that's everything there is, and it can be uh, broken down to this sheet. On this sheet, there's not the reset um, function drin, <laughs> function drin, this was German. There's not the reset function in it for the pitch bend wheel. So I may just to have this on this sheet. So mod wheel, set value, and pitch bend the same over here, reset value to the middle, for example. And that's now everything. So play sh play is shift plus um, octave down. The, this um, couple over here, record is shift, shift plus um, octave up. Undo is shift pitch bend. Beginning of the looper is MIDI channel 2 and D1. Previous jumping to the previous bar is MIDI channel 2 and C1. This is D1 and this is C1. Okay, toggle punch in, punch out. MIDI channel 2, E and F1. Open close parameter controls is MIDI channel 2, A sharp 1. And toggle expand C sharp 2. These two. Then the mod wheel is circling through the MIDI channels over here from 2 to 9 with the shift and the key over here and then using the mod wheel. Previous next item level is on MIDI channel 3, F sharp 1 and G sharp 1 for previous and next. Select item A 1 to 8 is MIDI channel 1, uh, sorry, MIDI channel 3 is C1 over the black keys to G1. Previous next item page is MIDI channel 2, C sharp 1 and D sharp 1. And you see previous previous and next item and previous next item page are on the on different MIDI channels. I'm not really sure if that if that's correct. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe this sheet is wrong. MIDI channel over here. See, it's MIDI channel 2. The sheet is not correct, so I will correct that. Okay, this is MIDI channel 2. Then next mode is shift mod wheel, so you can just circle through the modes or you, you directly select a mode. And what's here not here um, as well, not on the sheet is, um, ah, it's, it's on the sheet, select item over here, one to eight, from C1 to G1, and the different modes. And I think that's all the functions we added to this little basic controller that even have a, or that has now a, um, a turn or uh, like a, a controller for using like like the remote controls or something. Okay. So um, if you have any ideas um, about this workflow or you have an idea about own workflow, write me in the comments. Come to our Discord channel. Um, 
we are normally a German um, Discord channel, but we have an as well uh, a separate uh, channel for English. So if you if you talk English or you speak English, you can go in there, and um, we can talk to each other. Okay, and that's everything there is right now. So that's it again. My name is Odo Zendaidokai. Thank you for your time and attention. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, say hi to Jürgen and say hi to Bitwig and some greetings from me. Take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.